What label were the Romantics signed to? Uh, it was a custom label. Uh, Nemphora Records, uh, Nat Weiss uh, had Nemf Nemphora Records. Uh, Stanley Clark was on there and uh, uh, Steve Forbert and a few other people. And uh, yeah. uh, a custom label of uh, Epic Portrait, which is was a custom label of uh, CBS, Epic. Uh, and CBS. this is when you were yeah. in Detroit, Michigan, correct? Yeah, we, we toured. Uh, we, were, we played all the clubs in New York. We were going back and forth to New York all the time and Boston, Philadelphia, Toronto. And uh, we met up with, uh, well, we were, going, we were talking to CBS for a while and then it shifted over to Nemphor. Uh, and they took an interest and we got a really good deal with them. Seven records. We owned our own publishing. and uh, Good yeah. for you. That's, yeah. a, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. And we know each other through your publicist, Beatrice. Beatrice, beautiful, good lady. Yeah. New Impact. Daughter, new daughter. Impact PR. Yes. Yes. That's right. PR from Impact. E M P K T R P R. By the way, oh my God, that's a lot of that's a lot of P Ks and Ts and Rs. <laughs> <laughs> Not a pop in there. Yeah. So wow. So this is so you know you, you your trajectory is really cool. So. Um, I want to get back to how you how you started out as a guitarist. Yes. And you came up with that riff for what became a, you know, you could you could you could say that what I like about you that that song is probably a standard at this point. I mean, there I aren't so. that many people that have not heard that song. You and know, it's... that that's that's massive, right? I mean, like do you do you do you do you sometimes think, you know, it was just that one song, that one riff, and that came out of it, and it developed this life. And you know how songs can do songs can do that. You know, and sometimes it takes years for this to happen, like you were you were saying. You know, so yeah. can you take take us from the from the beginning when you wrote this, when you guys wrote this together? You know how you came up with the riff. You know how how the songs developed because in the very beginning you never think what you never know how things are going to develop. No. You don't know the life a, t a song will take. But so when it when it happens, how did you feel about it? How did it happen? Tell us a little bit, also a little bit about your upbringing in Detroit and, mm -hmm. you know, how you kind of got started. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, we didn't know what, that it was going to be anything. And I don't think about what you said uh, unless I'm really asked about it. You know, how big it is and how it's affected, affected, affected most people. It's uh, I, I, when someone asks me, that's when I go, wow, yeah, he's right. And, and, and it blows me away thinking about how young kids still are getting that song now at, at this time, you know, the young kids, you see young kids at the show from, from young age to older. And uh, uh, the song, I started playing, I went to, my parents uh, took us to, I was, the Beatles came out, the Kinks came out. I love the Kinks and the animals. And uh, they were kind of the second wave of the British invasion. And uh, uh, I, my parents took me to get, uh, I was going to get drums. Uh, uh, my brother was going to get a guitar and we got there and we, uh, to the music store. And, uh, um, this is, uh, around 1965, six, I was really young and a uh, young kid. And, uh, um, the salesman brought out a few guitars and, uh, then he goes, you know, drums, you're going to have to carry these around. And as soon as he said that it dawned on me. I didn't really want to carry drums around, so I got a guitar. But I had always always been interested in uh, singing and uh, piano, so I was kind of musical in that sense where guitar fits that uh, that form in my head musically, um, carrying a melody. Um, I got the guitar. It was difficult to play. It was a new guitar, but a Japanese guitar. The strings were like really far from the the fretboard. I couldn't really play it, so I used my brother's guitar. But uh, one summer, uh, uh, about a year later, I really got into it. Uh, school had just ended for the summer. Uh, I took the guitar and I learned all through the summer. I learned all I learned how to play basically through the summer of that one uh, semester off. Uh, in three or four months, I had you know a good a good idea of uh, my style was really percussive because of playing the drum thing. I, I learned how to play Satisfaction and other Rolling Stone songs and. Um, so I was a really percussive player, and the songs that were coming out at the time were uh, really the, the early psychedelic period. Would been would have been uh, a "You're Gonna Miss Me" by the uh, by the Thirteenth uh, Floor Elevators, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the uh, Blues Magoos. Uh, oh my, uh, yeah, yeah, I know those guys. I know those guys. You know, that stuff. Pepe and, Castro. Uh, Pepe Castro. 
Uh, yeah. Right. Do you know? Do you know him? I don't know him, but they played Detroit so much. They played on uh, Nine Mile Road and Livernois, right by East Detroit, uh, University of Detroit. There was a folk club, and they had all the psychedelic bands played there, and all the folkies played there. Joni Mitchell started there. Wow. And, so Pepe yep. Castro is a friend of mine. I, I, we met at like some some party or some kind of thing. They were um, the great. They in, were like in, a Detroit in Manhattan. Band, right? He he lives out here now. He's he's. I think he's out oh. on. Um, I think he's up Westchester or Long Island. I'm not sure. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were a great band because they had a Detroit feel, really a kind of a raw, bluesy, psychedelic feel. Blues Magoos. Mm -hmm. Really popular. They were here a lot. Mm -hmm. I think they came out of Chicago, I think, mm -hmm. or either L.A. or Chicago. Anyway, so I, I was into that whole uh, that whole new thing with uh, um, the Strawberry Alarm Clock and uh, the, the other one that did um, Had Too Much to Dream Last Night. Uh, that stuff and then you throw in uh the kinks and louis louis really hit me from the kingsman i love the guitar solo mm -hmm. and that that whole style that simple three four chord style still is with me so that's how uh, when i started writing songs for romantics uh, we were into simplicity and 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 really simple chord chord patterns and not too much uh co complicated uh stuff going on really just good melodies uh good hooks and choruses the choruses we wanted people leaving the show singing our songs so we wrote songs where they would could leave the song the show and remember how many times you go to a, a show you see a band one singer no one puts things back up on choruses and no one leaves singing the songs so we always thought yeah. we're selling ourselves so we want the songs to be sung as they're leaving so that was our kind of like our thing you know, complex, and, complexity can be a wonderful thing, and it can yeah. be very entertaining, and you can learn a lot from it. But there's there's really something to be to be said about a hook, and I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, if you can write a hook, you've yeah. got me, and you got everybody, really. You know, and simplicity so that, in yeah. that way can can go very far, can go very far. Yeah. Well, what I like about you still getting played and talking yeah. in your sleep, so, and. Yeah, uh, and so learning that simple way of playing, uh, what I like about you, uh, uh, I, I really come from the school of the Can't Explain and Pete Townsend, uh, where he'd take the open open notes, the droning notes, and the Keith Richard with his intros, and um, uh, and Jimmy Page and Yardbirds and that. I try to uh, bring it my own way, um, and then using the guitar and uh, my inspiration and and. So I had these chords for what I like about you, three chords, right? And um, I had uh, come up with it at my dad's house. I was living at my dad's house. I didn't even have a car at the time. Uh, the band had just started and we played about for a year and uh, a year into the band. And um, I came up with uh, these chords at the house, brought them to the studio. One day when the drummer, Jimmy, was there and I got there early this time. Usually I was late getting there, no car. And um, <laughs> so it was me and Jimmy. I brought, the, I got, hey, check these chords out. I come in the little storefront we have. He has, whenever we had the studio, he always had the lights perfect on his hair and for his drums. And, you know, it, it was a vibe. You know, you walk in the studio, you see the drums, the amps and the lights coming down. I love it. And, Showtime. Uh, yeah, it's just, it was our stage. And uh, I, he had been jamming on his drums. And I go, you know, I got this idea right now. You want to check it out? And he got out his drums. I played these three chords. He goes, man, that's got a good feel. He starts blurting out, you know, his little rhythm on the verse. So he was already coming up with something. So it actually zoned in on him doing it and him singing it. Um, yeah, this is something, you know, we're going through it. We practically, you know, he had a verse, I had the chords. And then I start coming up with, uh, uh, somehow I got, hey, uh-huh. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of a Chuck Berry thing. Hey, uh-huh. Uh, that came out. The other guys show up, and the song is practically practically done. It's like you know, just that quick. 